minds, man. First Timothy chapter number three, we started looking at the mystery of godliness and trying to pick it apart, which we should do biblically. I think it's one of the, as I mentioned before, it's not just the, it's, it's the foundational one. If you don't believe Jesus Christ is God, then you really don't have a sin payment. Uh, who else could pay for your sins but God Almighty? It's very crucial. That's why all the Bibles attack it. That's why the devil attacks it. It's to know who Jesus Christ is. As I mentioned last week, without being repetitive, we're going to get into it, is that you can tell what, where somebody's coming from, but just by simply saying, who do you believe or what do you believe Jesus Christ is? Well, he's a good person plus. Well, he's in the line of uh, the 28 prophets from Abraham on up to uh, uh, Muhammad, or whatever the case is, whatever the religion might say. Well, you know, he's the, the archangel Michael, but yeah, he had a better plan than the devil did, so therefore he gets to rule and reign. And I mean, if you read some of the stuff that Mormons believe, and most, it's, it's wild, man. Uh, the only book in the world that upholds Jesus Christ as God is the King James Bible. It's the only one that exalts the Savior as to who he is. I'm not going to say who he was. He's still God, uh, and he's still at the right hand of the Father, and he's going to come back in the clouds. That's his next move, take us up, and then we're going to go to the judgment seat of Christ, and he's going to come back and down in Revelation 19, and he's going to rule and reign on the earth for a thousand years. Then we're going to have the great white throne judgment, and then we're going to go to the city for all eternity, and that's Bible 101 in less than 30 seconds. So as my friend in Illinois says, how do you do that like that? I said, well, you know what? You've got to put down the Looney Tunes once in a while and read your Bible, man. Amen. But uh, it's, uh, it, this is the linchpin, I believe nailing down from the Word of God who Jesus Christ is. Uh, I think that's simple amongst us who believe, but there's a world out there that does not have any clue whatsoever. I saw this random, this random like article thing about um, there, there's a Christian outfit, which right off the bat you should go. It's a Christian outfit that's spending something like uh, $100 million or $200 million rebranding Jesus Christ to make him more... Um, uh, uh, you know, he's not, he's not the hypocritical Jesus that, you know, the, the, the wannabes worship, but they won't live the life. And he's not those far-right extremists who think there's only one way. So he's going to become everything to everybody. You know, he's, he's going he's gonna to be, he's gonna be a... a he'll, they'll make the Lord to be a sodomite pervert by the time it's all said and done. That's, let's just call it like it is, man. Uh, don't muddy up who my Savior is. Uh, one of the things they like to do is say, well, Jesus made wine. When you talk to somebody who likes to drink and imbibe in alcohol, what's the first thing they like to say? Well, well, it's nothing really wrong. Jesus made water into wine. Now, how do they know that, but they don't know whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved? That's just amazing to me. You know, they, they love, they, and plus the fact is, you know, how about this one when you tell somebody what the Word of God says? They, well, judge not lest you be judged. How do they know that when most saved people don't know where it is? Where is that, by the way? Judge not unless you be judged. Matthew 7. Matthew, there you go. That's Matthew 7. One, man. Amen. It's always questioning at the time. You better be ready. <laughs> you better be ready, son. Better be ready, son. All right, here we go. First Timothy chapter number 4. The Bible says this in verse number 14. Things, uh, these things write unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. But if I tarry long, that thou, uh, that thou mayest uh, know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Interesting, as I said last week, he ties in this mystery with the pillar and ground of the truth, the church. Uh, when a church deviates from who Jesus Christ is, you should leave that church. When a church leave, deviates from the Word of God, saying, they're, well, it's just a good version, and it's just, you know, we, we try to get a, a, a seeker-friendly version. Get away from that church. Well, you're narrow-minded bigoted. I'm as narrow-minded as this book says to be. You judge them on what they teach about Jesus Christ, how they handle the King James Bible, and honestly, rightly dividing is, is huge too. There's a bunch of stuff. It's all in our doctrinal statement. The, the, the 18 to 20 things that I think everybody should believe. No. <laughs> the pillar ground of the truth. Verse 16 says this, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on the world, received up into glory. Last week we uh, hit several verses on God manifest in the flesh. We'll hit a few more this night and then we'll get into justified in the spirit. Then we'll have class participation. Father, thank you again for the night, opportunity to look in your Bible. Uh, without the Spirit of God, Father, this is just a vain exercise, so I pray that we'd yield ourselves to the Spirit of God, and we'd yield ourselves to the teaching and instruction of the Spirit of God through this holy book. Thank you for preserving it. Thank you for inspiring it. Thank you for giving it uh, to us in a purified way that only God could, Father, this old King James Bible. Father, help us, please, to give our lives, our hearts, and our minds to it. That, Father, we be more like Christ each and every day in our heart and in our mind and our ways and our actions and less like ourselves, the old man. And, Father, thank you for saving us from hell. 
can never thank you enough for the blood that was shed by Calvary's Lamb, washing us and redeem us from all iniquity and the hell that we rightfully deserve. Thank you again for the night. Folks came out, pray a blessing upon this time, but more importantly, Father, you'd get the blessing and the honor and the glory and the praise. In Christ's name, amen. All right, go with me over to Acts chapter number 20. Acts chapter 20. We, we left off last week with Isaiah 40. Prepare you the way of the Lord, make a path and a highway for our God. Um, actually, no, we did look at Acts 20. I'm sorry, go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. 2 Corinthians 5. We did leave off. SDI, you're the scribulator, for, so what do we got? Where did we leave off? Mark chapter number 2 last week, right? Oh, you didn't bring... Oh, well, hey, hey, hey. We'll do counseling at 9 o'clock. Don't worry about it. We'll, get, we'll, do, we'll do counseling. We'll do a two for, We'll do a BOGO. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We did do, we did do Mark chapter 2. Where Jesus... I'm sorry? Miss, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Mrs. Cox, Mrs. Cogshaw would have it. We left off in Mark 2 last week because who can forgive sins but God only? And there he's standing right in front of you. So 2 Corinthians chapter number uh, 5, I'm going to have Brother Burt read verses 17 to 21, and we'll, we'll look at a few of these. I think we're not going to, this is not exhaustive on God was manifest in the flesh, but once I, and the ones I have written down, I'm going to ask you to get involved as well and give me some verses on the deity of Christ. So don't go ahead and get all cheating and freaking out, you know, and I'm paying attention, I'm paying attention, but you're really not, you're like reading Braille and you're trying to find verses. I know what's going on, man. 17, uh, 17 and 21, uh, Brother Bird, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. That God was in Christ, reconciled Amen. the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Amen. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now you're saying, well, where, where's the deity verse in that? Can anybody, can anybody pick out the deity in that passage between 17 and 21? Can you pick out the deity verse that's right in that, that stretch right there? I, it sounds like, oh, gee, I don't, I don't know. What, where's the deity verse? Go ahead. God was in Christ. Well, he's just the Christ child. He's just the virgin boy. I mean, he, you know, he's just a prophet. Okay, he's anointed above it. No, God was in Christ. Right off the bat. Is he God manifest in the flesh? 100% he is. But it's also, God is in Christ. In case you're wondering, well, oh, that's just a babe in the manger. And it's just, you know, well, it's just a suffering Savior on the cross. No, God is in Christ. You say, what's the big deal about that? Uh, aren't there many Christs? Isn't there the Lord's Christ? Uh, don't you have some clown that's coming on the scene when we're out of here? What's his name? The anti-what? Everybody says, well, he's just totally contrary to Jesus Christ. Uh, he'll end up being that way, but along the line, the first three and a half years at least, he's going to be exactly like Jesus Christ. Miracles, Resurrection from the dead, deadly wound, healing, all that stuff. You're going, the world is going to wonder after the beast and go, wow, I wonder if that's the Christ. No, the Lord's Christ is in glory. And God is in Christ. That's not just an, that's not just an or, ordinary Christ to throw that, that, that term around. No, that, that, that's God, man. That's God. Right, right, off, right, off, right off Jump Street. I, can't, I still to this day can't figure that out, that God came down, humbled himself, went into the womb of a virgin girl and was born. And she's holding God in her arms. I, I, honestly, I, I, I'm, I still, I, I look at, the, I, that's why without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. There, it's not for debate that God was in a baby. Now, for those of you who have had children, have had babies, you know your God, your baby is not Jesus Christ. Imagine being the perfect kid all the way through, never disobedient to parents, never doing anything uh, against his mother uh, or, his, or his, his stepdad's will, never. Imagine the report cards he must have brought home from Jerusalem Middle School. <laughs> Would you ever want to play Yahtzee with him? He always gets sixes in the straight. I'm like, what's, the, what's going on here? But that's got, folks, I, I make light of it, but you gotta, you got to picture this. We're not in 2022. We're, let's just for 
math's sake, go back to zero year. And you have God coming down here in the womb of a virgin girl and being born. It's not like they can get in a helicopter and go get life started if there's a problem. You don't think about stuff going on here. The animals in the manger seeing all that stuff and the filth and the dirt. It's a miracle that God came down here in a body. And it started as, could he have come down here as a 33 and one half year old man? Could he have come down here as 15 foot tall? He could have done anything he wanted to, but he came down. You know why? Because the only one that can pay for a sinner's debt is a human being that's sinless. Blood and bulls and goats can't do it, man. You need a man to take away a man's sin. That's why it's so important that we're studying this mystery, first of all. If look at the Bible. Bible goes on to say, Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. Deb, can you get Matthew 4, 1 through 7, please? And I know it's also in Luke, but I want to take this one in Matthew 4, 1 through 7, if you could, please. I personally, I like this. This one's awesome to me. Mm. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and set up him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning him. Mm -hmm. I, you look at that last verse, Deb, just read verse 7. Do you see what Jesus Christ just said to that old stupid devil? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Who is he saying is the Lord thy God? Don't tempt me because I'm going to kick you right in the lake of fire. It's just going to take a little time. It's going to take me a couple days, but don't worry. Your end is coming. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He's, the Lord thy God is right in front of Jesus is Lord. It's the Lord of glory of God the Father. What a day that's going to be to see that old, that old serpent get his, man. I can't wait. I don't know, but I hate him. I think of the stuff he's done to me. He's my adversary. And I, I understand I'm my own greatest enemy, and you're your own greatest enemy as a saved person, your flesh. But don't tell me we don't have an enemy. Don't tell me we don't have a tempter and an adversary and all those things and a deceiver. And did you see how he talks to the Lord? How's he start off his conversation? If. Uh, don't you get doubts about your salvation? Well, if you were really saved, you wouldn't do that. Yep. Well, if, they, if God really loved you, he wouldn't let your baby die. That's how he speaks. He's in a doubtful, questioning mode all the time. You know why? Because God's not the author of confusion. confusion. He is. And if he can get you to be confused and doubtful about your Savior, you won't pray as much, you won't spend time in that book as much, you won't witness to people because, ah, what's the use? Who really cares? And there he is. And you know what? Jesus says, you know what? Don't ever tempt me because I'm thy God. I love, man, I love that. I, I don't know about it. I can't wait till he get, I cannot wait to see that, that red just writhe in that lake of fire with his buddy the beast and the false prophet. I cannot wait, man. He's your enemy, folks. He hates you. I, I can't stand when people say, I'm just playing devil's advocate. No, you have an advocate. His name's Jesus Christ. Well, I just want to play a devil's advocate. <laughs> Why would you do that? You want to take sides with that, idiot? No, we have an advocate with the Father. His name's Jesus Christ, the righteous. I want to show you something pretty neat. And I, I know you probably know this already, but it's good for you to check it out again with your, with your peeps. Your peep. Uh, not with your peeps. You're my peeps, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Psalm, go to Psalm 91. So without teaching on the temptation, because I might have to you know, store that away when it's Saturday night and i got nothing going on, so you know what I'm saying? Get a, I'm like, yeah, let's go back to an old, an old classic. No, uh, he, the, the devil is very good at quoting the Scriptures. He's very good. Uh, you know who has the best preachers in the world? The devil. You know who has the best ministers in the world? The devil. 2 Corinthians 11 tells you that. His ministers, they appear as ministers of righteousness. I bet the best satanic ministers have a King James Bible. Oh, it's Anton LaVey with his pointy haircut, which 
his mother ought to be slapped for doing that to him. But anyway, you know the point in the, in the Satanic Bible, oh, we know he's really a Satan. No, it's the guy with a nice $2,000 suit in a King James Bible who just perverts and twists it just enough to mess you up. That's what you've got to look out for. He doesn't transform into the prince of darkness. He transforms into an angel of light. Look at Psalm 91. You're going to see how he quotes these. Everything you see in here, the devil's quoting about an event in the past and or the future or both. Okay? Jennifer? Okay. Jonathan, go ahead and take this. No, um, <laughs> Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 91. Jennifer, if you could. Man, this is just so good. Can you start in verse number 7 and just go to 16? Psalm 91, 7 through 16, please. Very quickly, do you remember what the, uh, the attack on King David was by Michael? What's that? Oh, look at David. Oh, they're just singing about it. Well, Saul's only killed 1,000. David's killed 10,000. Oh, it carries right over here. You're right. I did kill, kill 10,000. What are you, jealous? Don't hate the player. Hate the game. <laughs> Go ahead. Mm -hmm. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Does that sound like something you just read in, in Matthew 4? Now look at what that old serpent left out. And if I was him, I'd leave this verse out too. Uh, gee, I wonder who is a lion and who is a dragon and who is going to get stomped under the foot one day of the Lord. I'd leave that part out too if I was a devil. You leave out the parts you don't like, huh, Satan? You sound like a Bible-believing Christian. Go ahead. That was meant to be funny and sarcastic. Go ahead. Amen. That's to do with Israel and the shadow of death and a bunch of stuff happened in the tribulation period. That shadow of death hiding the rocks. As that shadow of death moves across, get protection from it. He hides them in a dwelling place in the habitation. That's what 91 says down. He'll keep you from pestilence and all that. You, we didn't read it, those first six verses. What's going on in the tribulation? Pestilence and all that stuff, just like it was in Exodus with Pharaoh and Moses and all that. And he keeps them safe, Israel, but obviously it takes, goes forward to Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter number 4. So what you look, go back to Matthew 4 real quick, and I'm not, I'm not going to preach uh, Matthew 4 or teach out of it, but just a lot of good stuff in there. I will say this, in verse number, uh, verse number, verse number 3, 4, 3, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread, okay? And then over in verse number 6, says, if thou be the Son of God, cast thy self down, as written, he shall give his angels charge concerning them in their hands, that shall bear thee up, lest, uh, lest any time they dash the foot against stone. Then you go down to verse number 8, and uh, again, the devil taketh them to an exceeding high mountain, show them all the kings of the world, the glory of them, saith unto, uh, saith unto them, all these things will I give thee, if thou shalt fall down, worship me, and so on and so forth. Now, let me, let me, let me ask you a question. Are those things going to happen someday in the future? Is he going to feed Israel one day out in the wilderness? Is he going to be exalted if he dashes his foot? The angels will be right there to catch him. Is he going to have all the glory of the kingdoms one day? So what's the devil's grand plan in your life and in the Lord's life? To get you to do something that's out of God's timing. Are all those things going to happen? 100% they are. Are they going to happen right then? Nope. But Lord, I want it now. I want this to happen now. I need you to answer my prayers now. I need you to do this. And the Lord's like, well, well, hold, hold on. Hold your, hold your spoon and your fork. Dessert's coming. Yeah, but I, I want it now. Well, well, what happens if Jesus got it then, before he goes to the cross? Did you see what else was intertwined in there? Why don't you throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple and kill yourself? I couldn't get you via Herod. Let me get you now. There's a lot in that thing, man. 
There's a lot of stuff going that's intertwined through that temptation. Yes, I know it's a wonderful thing to preach on with the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes of prior life. I understand it's, it's wonderful. But there's a lot of prophecy going on in Matthew 4 and Luke 4. A lot of stuff, man. Just cool for you to consider as you're reading through your, reading through your Bible. But another, another verse that proved that Jesus Christ was God manifest in the flesh. Go with me to 1 John. I, I shouldn't probably go very fast on that, but if you have any questions or whatever on what I just said, ask Brother Bert. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff in there, man. You have a question, all right? Haley, are you okay? Okay, hey, listen, no whispering in the back. There's a triangle of whispering over there. It's a, yeah, I know, I know. All right. First John, please. Uh, Brother Jonathan, could you get First John 17 to 21? I mean, I could have picked just one verse, but 17 to 21 just feels so good when you read them. 1 John 5, 17 to 21. Did I not say that clearly? I didn't say 1 John 5? Get out now, all of you. I hope you dash your foot against a stone. <laughs> and then I'll pick it up and throw it at you. All right, so, 1 John 5, 17 to 21, you rebels. Fetch water out of the rock yourself. Anyway, go ahead. Did you just see who the true God and eternal life is? It's his son, Jesus Christ. He's just the son, you know. Well, God says it's the true God and eternal life. Even if you want to downgrade him to son, which he is the son of God, he's the son of man, no problem with that. But if you just want to take a shot at him, the Bible, God just said, that's the true God and eternal life, my son, Jesus Christ. Doesn't he say early in the chapter, he that hath the son hath life. What kind of life does he have? Eternal life. Well, I thought you could lose your salvation. See, your salvation is not dependent upon you, or else you would lose it. Your salvation is based on the one who has eternal life, who is eternal. And the next time you lose your salvation is the next time he dies, which is, oh, never. I guess these people come with these doctrines, man. I know, the, I know there's verses in the Bible that teach or appear to teach you can lose your salvation, but they're not directed towards you as a New Testament Christian in the body of Christ. Your, your salvation is complete as complete could ever be. <laughs> uh, it's just whether or not you want to walk after the flesh or walk after the Spirit. All right, Hebrews chapter number one, speaking of the true God and eternal life. I, like I said, I'm not exhausting these. I just wanted to show you a few of them, and then we'll, we'll, have, we'll have what I like to call class participation, my, my funnest time of all time. <laughs> Hebrews chapter number one, please. Taylor, one through eight. You know where I'm going. I mean, this is a classic. You can't. Uh, for those of you who have ever de dealt with Satan's witnesses, that's what they are. They're out of the kingdom hall. You're mean. You should No, they're Satan's witnesses. They're deceived. Uh, a true witness, according to 1425 of Proverbs, a true witness does what? He delivereth souls. They don't even believe you have a soul. It's the grave, and then, well, if you're really the wicked, it's the annihilation at the end of it. Well, how can you be, call yourself a witness when you don't, don't deliver anybody's soul? You should make fun of other people's religion. God does. I'm pointing out the truth of the matter is that God says this, you and your book say that and your prophets and your whatever you got going on. Uh, but they'll argue with you about, well, he's just the son and he died on a stake and, eh, you know, well, yeah, he, he's just not God. Okay. We've got a really good verse right here, man. Hebrews 1, 1 through 8. I know a lot of you folks know it's, it's a good one. Not to start, I'm not doing this to argue with Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm doing this to teach you the mystery so it gets ingrained in your heart and your mind because I'm supposed to be a steward over this thing. Go ahead. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, 
Does anybody know what sun dry? And don't say tomato or I'll smash you. What is what does sun dry or sundry mean? Does anybody know what sundry means? In case no, what's that? If you've ever been over to England, they still have sundry shops. It's pretty cool over there. It's a it's based, it's a variety store, and di divers. Now, Megan, you work at Collins Aerospace. We're all about diversity. So if you put an E at the end of divers, what do you have? Diverse. So it's a variety store or a variety of in many different ways. God spoke to me. He could use, the, he could use Balaam's, Balaam's donkey. He could use the rocks to speak out. He could write it with his finger uh, on the ground. He could do it a multitude of ways, but look how he chose to do it in these last times. Amen. Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. I thought Jesus and Michael and there's oh I'm sorry, go ahead. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, thou art my son, this day have I begotten. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Amen. <laughs> That's what we call Roger Clemens against Mike Cameron with the, the crowd going wild in Seattle and bases loaded and Clemens buries a 97 on the, on the corner and Mike Cameron just flips his bat, takes his helmet off, puts the gloves in and just goes to his position after he said a couple things that he's worshiping God with. Because basically, that's, that, that's it right there. God the Father says to the Son, you're God. If you can't get that, man, I don't know what to, I don't know what to do for you. Well, he's just the Son. He's a lower God. He's a made God. No, he just told you and I for our reading that he said to the Son, thy throne, O God. That is, that's three, put your helmet and your bat down and run out to your position. We'll get your glove for you because you just struck out with the bases loaded. That's what it is. God just said, oh, you just want to denigrate my son? Well, let me tell everybody that wants to read this book, my son is God. I like that, man. You should never, you should never get tired. I love that stuff, man. Titus chapter 2, please. Titus chapter 2. Haley, Titus chapter number 2. You know where I'm going with this one. Oh, I hope you do. Titus chapter number 2. Haley, get uh, uh, 11 through 15, if you could. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, and discreetly. Real quick, how many, how many people did God's salvation appear to? Sorry, Calvin. Sorry, predestination. God handpicks who's saved, who's not. The salvation has appeared to under all men. They now make a have to make a decision to repent toward God, have faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ, and trust the Lord to save them. But it's available to each, and it's been given to every and all men. Go ahead. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I don't know if you ever heard some braying donkey try to take verse 13 and say, oh, that's two separate people there. It's got... No, 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 no. What are we supposed to be looking for? The great God and our Savior. They're together. I'm looking for my great God and my Savior who's going to come in the clouds one day for me if I don't die first. And based off of this, I'll probably die very shortly. This, this gets hot. This gets heated for people. Well, no, he's not. No, he's not God. He's not really God. And you, you can't make him God. He was just a, he's, he's just, he's, he's a fisherman or he's, he's a carpenter's son. He, he's nobody. Exactly. Then why does it bother you so much? Well, he's just Jesus. Well, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. He has a name above every name. 
So that name is pretty important to God. Without even getting into all this stuff, I mean, you remember how God puts his name in Matthew 1 and in Luke 1? In like 72 font. <laughs> you know where that goes for me? That takes me right to Revelation chapter 19 where it says what? <coughs> in big old block font. You mean Jesus, the baby, is the king of kings? Yes, that's exactly who he is. He's the I am in block capitals. You say, what's the big deal? This is the cornerstone, man. If Jesus Christ isn't God, let's just go do what we want to do. Let's break up church. We'll never have, throw away your Bible. That's how serious this mystery is. I, can't, I, cannot, I cannot emphasize Jesus Christ was, uh, God was manifest in the flesh. He is God. He's coming back as God, and that's the way it is. But he can still maintain separation between God and the Son and still give reverence in place to the Father. You're asking me, how does that happen? I don't know. Ask him when you see him. Because that, that's why the mystery of God is so unbelievable. You're like, God came down here, and he's God, but he puts himself under subjection to the Father. You're God. Yeah, I'm just trying to give you a model so you can live your life like that. Brother Bird, I saw the hand up there. You got a little tired and put it back down. Go ahead. That's all right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So if somebody wants to argue about, you know, antecedents, press, all that stuff in the sentence structure, himself refers to the great God and our Savior together. It's not, they're not splitting them up. So, I'll, I'll tell Bert, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm dumbfounded right now. Amen. 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 That's good preaching, brother. That's good preaching, brother. Good preaching right there. Yeah. <laughs> He, the, exactly. He is the gene. There's no, there's no question about it. He's, he's awesome. All right. Justified in the spirit. Let's, uh, you know what? No, let me, ask, let me ask you guys. Give me some verses on the deity of Christ. You, Jennifer's like ready to go. Polly, go ahead. Because I want Polly to take Jennifer's. That's what I want. No, I am mean. You'll be so mean. Look at you. So mean. Wow. Go ahead, Polly. Okay. What says what? Behold, the virgin shall be with the child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, which being interpreted is God with us. That's a great one. Emmanuel is God with us. Okay, hold on. I know, I know you got, uh, we got to go over here. Go ahead, because she's about to have a seizure, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Isaiah 9 6. For unto us a child is born. Oh, it's the best. I think we did do that last week. It has to be outside. It has to, it has to be outside the realm of the ones I've given you. Go ahead, Estiana, please. Which one? We did that last week. I, I'm not looking for something whacked out. I'm just looking for something different than the ones we covered. Some ones that you, you know. Okay, I'm going to go Haley, Taylor, Burt, and then I'll give you a chance. Go ahead, Haley. First Peter 1, 3 through 5. Can you just, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. He has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So how are you going to, because there's a clear separation between God and the Son right there. I'm not dogging you, I'm just saying, where would you make the tie that God and that Jesus Christ is God with that? I mean, I get it, it's a great, so Taylor, go ahead. There you go. Let this mind be in you, which is all. Amen. That's, that's the one that I did not put that. Like I said, I didn't write them all down because, number one, I would like you to think about what it means to you, but also, you know, I don't, I don't want to exhaust the thing. Go ahead, Estiana. We're back. Actually, I said Bert, then Estiana. So I love you, Bert. Go ahead. <laughs> no. First John 5 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. There you go, man. And how would you tie that in? Uh, we didn't use that one, but how would you tie it in? Well, because John 1 says he is. The, nah, that, see now, Estiana, that's the one you should have got. Is the 5-7 because you got the 1-1. One, one. Okay, back to Estiana. Go ahead. Didn't we do John 8, 58? We did. We did. Remember, because we, we tied that in with Exodus last week, remember? No. Yeah, we did. Okay. <laughs> well, if you had your notebook, you'd be good to go. 
Okay, Deb, Cogshaw, and then, then Kenny. John 1030, I, I didn't have that one down, amen? That's a good one. That's a real good one. That goes along with 1 John where he says the, the three are one. Kenny, go ahead, and then we'll... Um, okay, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I was kind of looking in 23, um, true worship, don't worship the Father, mm -hmm. the truth and the Father seeking such to worship Him. I get it. God is a spirit, so that they worship, must worship Him in spirit and truth. Okay. No, that's that that's that's in the that is definitely in the neighborhood, yeah. much better than your wife did. So very good. Now, I, look 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 real quick, and I know I'll go I'll go just in a, look at look at verse twenty look at verse twenty six. Look at brother Kane just read it. Jesus saying there I, and then take away not take away but look at the, take away the next four words. What's the next one? I that speak unto thee, am. He. You know how many I am's are in. The Gospel of John. I mean, it's honestly, I'm not being smart with you. I'm saying you could just go in the book of John and just say, I am the bread of life. I am. It's, it's just, it's through there. And of course, John presents him as God manifests in the flesh. Go ahead, Justin, you got one for me? Revelation 19, um, I guess started at 11 and go to verse 16, I guess. Okay, fire away, please. He doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, and that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's called the Word of God, man. Word made flesh. And all right, I'm back around. I right, I'm 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 gonna go to Jennifer and then see what else is lurking around here. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and names. Mm-hmm. And not after fullness of the Godhead bodily. See? Was that so difficult? I, no response, please. No response. No feed. I'm getting feedback right now. That was that's fine. You did great. Jonathan, go ahead. <laughs> that would be uh, so then the flesh cannot please God, or no, that's eight. What is nine? Well, you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. spirit. If so be the spirit of Christ. I would I would take that. You'd have to do a little bit of explain to the to the to the new, but you got the spirit right in there. And God and Christ and all that stuff. That's pretty cool. Haley. Galatians four six. I think that may suffice right there, buddy. Go ahead. The spirit of his son, God and Abba Father. Justin, I only have one more person that I need to consult with, and that is Estiana Green. Go ahead, please. Oh. <laughs> Wow, appealing to my soft side, and I do have a soft side. <laughs> Go ahead. That is actually, I, I'm gonna, we're going to have a moment right here. That is actually the one I was hoping somebody would go to, because what was I just emphasizing when we were reading through it? The sun, they just high-fived over here. <laughs> that is so, that is so, Team Green. Oh, wow, man. Wow, man. That, 
that the reason the reason why is because what we were just talking about that people will denigrate Jesus Christ by saying, "Well, he's just the son. He's just the son." Oh, well, 17 and 18 will work very well. Go ahead, please. Well, he's just, you know, he's just the son of God. Yeah, he just claimed that God's his father. Guess what? That makes him equal with God. <laughs> That's good stuff, man. I'll show you one of my favorites, and then we'll, we'll close it down. What I'd like to do tonight, all kidding aside, uh, I'd like to grab the prayer list and pray for a few minutes. It'd be a good thing to do, I think, as a congregation. I should have probably done it a lot sooner, but it'd be just good for us to do it. Or you don't have to grab the prayer list. You can just, you know, meet up and pray with one another. Do this. Go to, before we do that, go to Isaiah, please. Give you a couple on these. Oh man, there's a couple spots. Look at forty two eight. No, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna have to cheat. I'm gonna have to cheat and go back to my revelation reference. It is an Isaiah. I know. I'm getting old, man. Synapses aren't firing, man. I'm sorry, it's 44. 44. Isaiah 44, the Bible says this in verse number 6. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. While you're right here, go over to chapter 48 of Isaiah. Go to Isaiah 48, please, while you're right here. Isaiah 48, 12 says this, Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am he, I am the first, I also am the last. Go to Revelation chapter 1, please. Look at verse number, oh, this is just so good, man. Verse number 12, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Revelation, Revel yeah, Revelation 1, 12. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. In the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment, down to the foot, and girded about the paps of the golden girdle. That would be the, the chest region. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice is the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. That's Revelation 19 and, and Hebrews 4.12 references. And his countenance was as the sun, Malachi 4.2 and Psalm 19, shineth in his strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold... I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys to hell and death. When's the last time God ever died in your Bible? He doesn't die in Isaiah. He does when he takes upon him a body. I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. That's the same God from Isaiah. That's the Lord of all, the Savior of all, the King of Israel, the Redeemer of Israel. That's the same one. He's the first and the last, and he did die. And now he's alive forevermore. Uh, so God did die on that cross. God was manifest on the cross, uh, in the flesh, so he could die on that cross, shed that blood. So Lord, we'll look at uh, justified in the Spirit next week. Brother Paul, pray for us, please. Yeah, amen. Really pray that we'll live it for you. We'll really understand what it means to, to have a God that came down in the flesh. Amen. Amen. Yeah.
Amen. So if you want to do...